Welcome. I am going to explain how to do co-integration in R. Uh, I'll take data from Applied Econometrics Time Series Walter Enders Chapter 6 Co-integration. The data name is co So, uh, first of all, I am going to uh, load the relevant libraries and then I am going to uh, load the data and I'll explain each and every step. Okay. So first of all, let's uh, load library, read Excel, library tidy versus our umbrella package, library broom for getting uh, linear models, regression tables in nice format, library T series for time series data, library URCA for uh, uh, doing co-integration and other time series analysis. So I'm going to read this data from Walter Enders, which is named as coint6. Basically, this data is given simulated data on W, Y, and Z series, and it's it's uh, you can read it. Okay, now I am generating it. Uh, you see number of observations because I want to plot it to using ggplot. You can you can use any other way of plotting this data. I have explained it time and again. So first of all, the first thing is that we have data, second is we have observation index, third is value and color by series. So we have three series here and we have this plot now. You can see from this plot that series has not constant mean over time. All these series have some downward trend and then, then there is some uh, the upward trend. So they are non-stationary uh, uh, in itself, but they seem some sort of linkages that they uh, uh, decline together and then they rise together. But I'm not going to explain the concepts here. Uh, those are explained in my other videos. At the moment, I'm going just going to do how to do it in inter, uh, in R. So we, we, can, we can see that our series are non-stationary. So first of all, we are going to regress Y and Z and W. This will be spurious because Y, Z and W are non-stationary. So you cannot have uh, a non-stationary variable regressed on another non-stationary variable. Those, those relationships uh, are called spurious relationships because uh, the, 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 your residuals will not meet the standard properties. So there is strong relationship between all these variables. But is it genuine relationship or not? We have yet to see. So I am going to basically now take ACF of Y series. It's not geometrically declining. So it is another indicator that it's not stationary. This is also not geometrically declining W series. This one is also not geometrically declining. So ACF of all these three series indicate series are non-stationary and we have seen the from the graphs as well. Similarly, you can plot PACF, PACF, but PACF will be only useful if we have, uh, if we have uh, the uh, ACF geometrically declining, then we can apply ARMA models. Now we have all these three series which seems non-stationary instead of uh, just relying on our uh, uh, results through visuals we are going to test formally how to whether uh, whether unit root test augmented dicky fuller test indicate non stationary or not so first of all i am going to take only zero lag it means these dependent variable difference lags will not be there so i am taking the y series lag 0 y series lag 4 W Z series lag 0, W series lag uh, at lag 0 and at lag 4. So we have tested this and you can see from here that your estimate is this one and P value is 0.679. So null hypothesis of non-stationary is not rejected. And similarly at lag 4, I'm going to do it quickly. Uh, okay, at lag 4, the same result. Your p-value is basically your estimate and your p-value is 0.5754. It means your uh, y-series is non-stationary, uh, has unit root at le uh, leg 0 as well at, at leg 4. Same is the case with uh, your z-series at leg 4 as well. Same is the case with the, uh, the, the okay, leg 4 p-value is not. Sig uh, significant so non-stationary null hypothesis is not rejected. Please recall that series is non-stationary. That is your null hypothesis W. So, and again, with the W, you have the same result that 
null hypothesis of non stationary is not rejected leg 4 and so in a way we have seen the graphs acf psef and through unit root that all these three series seems non stationary so let's take the residuals of these stationaries if the residuals of these stationary these these series are stationary it means that linear combination of these variables is stationary so that seems that there is some sort of cointegration so i am taking the residuals and when i apply residuals now you can see the p value is 0 0.00001 after four zeros so it's it's a stationary at lag 4 it's again so now we are taking the residuals whether the residuals the linear combination is stationary or not so we can see that the residuals are stationary and you can apply the same formula i'll provide you all these codes in this youtube video link you can you can use this okay and here we have a, a, a stationary 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 and so all our results are stationary which which indicates that their linear combination of w y and z is stationary so it means there is some sort of cointegration now we are basically going to take it, make it a data frame if you want to regress uh, the, these variables in difference form but war model in difference form should be regressed if these are not cointegrated so this is just an exercise but in this case it's not true because y z and w are in itself non stationary but their linear combination is stationary so you have data you can apply war models i have explained in war model video so you have these war models a difference of y regressed on leg of difference lag of difference of z's lag of difference of w and constant are all that that's not no i am going to apply the cointegration test johansen cointegration test so this is johansen cointegration and data and i am using type s trace so when i take this one so you see null hypothesis that there is zero cointegration 55 this is greater than all these values at 10 percent 5 percent 1 percent therefore we say that there is more than zero cointegration so now we take less than one uh, so this is 16 so at uh, uh, 10 percent we can say that there is one cointegrating vector and it's on the margin at five percent and when we take this one so we 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 see that there is uh, uh, this is not uh, rejected so it means there is one cointegrating vector because this is rejected this is not rejected so therefore it means there is one cointegrating vector so i am going to take it summary of this one and these are, this is your, these are your eigen values at the moment i am going to, uh, I, okay now you can run your this r is 1 r is 1 and now you can run vacuum model which i explained in my previous video and you can see its summary so you have these results with you okay summary of this one uh, uh, just a minute please well i i want to show one table but that's not uh, at the moment i am i am not getting it anyhow so you can you can have this way of doing cointegration at the moment i am going to oh yeah i think that's that's after having beta uh, okay ecm yes that's that's no this is ect error correction at leg 1 and all these coefficients are negative and these these are your long run dynamics and this is difference of y at leg 1 difference of z at leg 1 difference of w at leg 1 so you can do this 
and similarly you can plot impulse response function no impulse response function from structural war model has economic interpretation from reduce one one models it has a slightly different interpretation so you have to be careful at the moment i am not i am just explaining how you can do it in r so you can have this ecm i am not running this at the moment because it may cause a problem uh, so i'll run it at the end so and see how impulse response functions and ecm plots looks like okay similarly if you take another data like quarterly where i have two variables uh, one is uh, uh, a treasury bill rate so you have two variables one is treasury bill rate another one is 10 years interest rate you can see their residuals and all that you i i'll provide you these codes and now you see again you have these results null of zero co-integration is rejected null of one is not rejected so therefore we think that there is at least one point there is one co-integrating vector and you can uh, okay sorry so uh, this this is your result ect1 and all the all the uh, all those things ect1 and first leg of each variable so you can you can apply similarly now i am going to plot uh, uh, impulse response functions let's hope everything goes well oh that's that's your basically uh, you know you you see this is this is uh, stationary so linear combination of all those three non stationary variable is stationary and you can have a line like this one and oh there is some error and if i plot impulse response function it may take time but if i render it like this way i think things will settle down and uh, okay you have to wait for a couple of uh, minutes maybe uh, i am rendering this document and there there will be impulse response functions let's see okay document is rendered oh uh, yeah that's okay that's okay okay yeah so this is what i have uh, these are three dots and all that and okay th th these are autocorrelation functions partial autocorrelation functions unit root tests and all that i'll uh, you can just click render and you will get all these results the file i will provide you in the video link you can get all these codes data you have to download or you have to send me a message so orthogonal impulse response from y to y from y to z from y to w impulse response function from z to y z to z w to z, from w to d, and this is uh, uh, these are your ecm this is my second uh, data sets i hope now you get an idea and i'll provide all these codes in uh, a video link so you can use this and uh, just uh, upload your data and follow these steps you will have co integration in r thank you for watching take care